A meeting is about to get underway where we expect to find out who the next Dothan City School Superintendent will be. News Force Madeline Hackett joins us live from the Dothan City School System office with the latest on this superintendent search. Madeline? Natasha Reg, according to Alabama state law, Dothan City School System has 180 days to fill the vacant superintendent position left by previously terminated superintendent Tim Wilder. And time is ticking because today is day 180. Within the last 45 minutes, a new superintendent was chosen for Dothan City Schools. Hey, first, Madeline Hackett joins us live from outside the meeting. Madeline? Well, Reg and Natasha, it feels like we have been waiting ages for this decision to finally be made, but in just the past half an hour, Dr. Charles Ledbetter has been chosen for Dothan City Schools' next superintendent. He won by a 5-2 to two vote over Dr. Carla Evers of Gulfport, Mississippi. The search is finally over for the next Dothan City School superintendent. News Force Danielle Wallace was at the meeting where Dr. Charles Ledbetter was chosen as the next leader for Dothan City Schools. Danielle? Natasha, board members say it wasn't an easy process. With two of their best candidates, they've settled on Dr. Charles Ledbetter to lead Dothan City Schools. After rounding up six candidates, Dr. Charles Ledbetter comes out on top to fill the position of Dothan City School Superintendent. Board members say either decision between Ledbetter or Dr. Carla Evers would be a win. We're so excited, but we had two great candidates, Dr. Evers from Mississippi and, and him, and we could not have gone wrong, and, and uh, this community just needs to get behind him and let's go. Alabama's top election official says Dothan superintendent vote was illegal. Good afternoon, I'm Natasha Chugtai. I'm Reginald Jones. Thank you for joining us for News 4 at 5. People thought Dothan had a new school superintendent after yesterday's vote, but one has not been hired after all. Instead, the school board will convene an emergency session tomorrow after News 4's Ken Curtis investigated the legality of the vote. He joins us live from our newsroom with details. Ken? Well, it happened because the school board, Natasha, didn't abide by state law when it chose Dr. Chuck Ledbetter to be its next superintendent. Now the board, uh, the school board attorney Jerry Segris admits the secret ballot taken last night did indeed violate Alabama's open meetings regulations. That's because we don't know how each member voted, only that it was a five to two vote in favor of Dr. Ledbetter, depriving the public's right to know the person each school board member supported. Now, the first thing this morning, we contacted the Alabama Secretary of State to check on the legality. A few hours later, another vote was scheduled. Obviously, it was done by secret ballot because there was not a verbal vote cast for that topic. We asked the school board attorney yesterday afternoon before we went in there, how do we do this? And, and so he told us what he, he perceived us to do. So that's what we did. And we, we uh, so in the morning, I'm sure he'll tell us exactly what to do. So it's a procedural mistake. We made a procedural mistake. I want to talk a little bit about what Secretary Merrill said today. Actually, you can vote via a paper ballot, but you have to let everybody know what those votes were and who cast the votes for whatever. As for Dr. Ledbetter, we talked to him this afternoon. He said he knew nothing about the situation. So does this jeopardize his appointment as superintendent? Well, the answer is almost certainly no. And one more note on this matter today, school board attorney Jerry Segrist told me he takes full responsibility, saying it was his goof. So again, tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon now actually, uh, we'll see what pans out on this, but certainly some significant development today, guys. All right, Ken, thanks so much. And the school board will vote again tomorrow at 5 p.m. The meeting is only expected to take a few minutes. Breaking developments in Dothan's city search for a new school superintendent. Good evening, I'm Reginald Jones. And I'm Natasha Chagtai. Thanks for joining us for News 4 at 6. Happening just in the last hour, a special called meeting scheduled for the Dothan School Board tomorrow morning has been now canceled until further notice. It's a development that just unfolded. That emergency meeting was called to hold a new vote for the next superintendent. Turns out that the board's vote last night selecting Dr. Charles Ledbetter was illegal. News Force Ken Curtis joins us live with how this all could happen. Ken. Yeah, and, and Reg, it's not just one meeting that's been canceled for tomorrow. There has now been two meetings canceled for tomorrow. Let me chronologically take you through the order of events. Last night, the school board voted.
two in favor of Dr. Lynn. And that was done by paper ballot and how each board member voted was not made public. We contacted the Alabama Secretary of State today. His name is John Merrill. And Mr. Merrill told us under no circumstances is that legal. The vote has to be done in public and each school board member's vote has to be made public. Now, while first defending the way the vote was uh, taken last night, uh, the school board attorney, Jerry Segrist, later said, I goofed. It was not legal. Then they called a special meeting for tomorrow morning when they would, for lack of a better term, revote. That meeting was canceled, and I'm understanding it's because there was some doubt about the emergency meeting statute being in place. That allows the school board to, uh, to meet under emergency circumstances, and this may not qualify for that. So they moved the school board meeting to revote until 5 tomorrow afternoon. Just a few minutes ago, I spoke with board chairman Harry Wayne Parrish. Mr. Parrish telling me that it's a difficult right now to get all the school board members together at that time. So as we stand today, the vote on Dr. Ledbetter has been negated. Another school board meeting is going to be held whenever it's anticipated or when it's anticipated that Dr. Ledbetter will be chosen again. When does that school board meeting happen? Right now, guys, we just simply don't know the answer. Back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Ken. The selection process began after Tim Wilder was terminated in November, but when Wilder was hired, it was by the same voting method as Dr. Ledbetter's, one that the school board attorney admits now was illegal. New developments in Dothan City search for a new superintendent. Good evening, I'm Natasha Chugtai. Thanks for joining us for News 4 at 10. This time last night, we were reporting on the selection of a new Dothan School superintendent. Now we're reporting that the vote hiring Dr. Charles Ledbetter was illegal. And while there's little doubt that Dr. Ledbetter will still be hired, the twist and turns that got us to where we are tonight make for one interesting story. News Force Ken Curtis explains in tonight's top story. WTVY first questioned the vote Monday night, but we were assured by school board chairman Harry Wayne Parrish and board attorney Jerry Segrist everything was legal. The board voting 5-2 to two to hire Dr. Ledbetter, but didn't make public how each board member voted. It's our belief, according to the way the code is written, that any governmental body that takes a vote, it must be done in public. And the way the body votes individually, must be revealed. Later Tuesday, Segrist said he checked and indeed we are correct. The vote did violate Alabama's open meetings laws. We had a procedural mistake. Our, our school board lawyer made a procedural mistake about how we voted uh, last night. And so what we're going to do is uh, not re-vote, not re we're just going to bring the issue back up again and redo. A specialty call meeting was set for Wednesday morning at 8. However, amid concerns that proper and legally mandated 24-hour advance notice of a public hearing may be another state violation, the meeting was moved, rescheduled for 5 p.m. Wednesday, but it too was canceled. Parrish telling WTVY there was difficulty getting board members together due to prior obligations and admitting right now he doesn't know when the board will meet. It's expected Ledbetter will be selected, this time in a legal and open manner. And Dothan Ken Curtis, WTVY, your hometown news leader right now. We spoke to Dr. Ledbetter this evening, and he told us that he still looks forward to making Dothan home. He said, quote, mistakes happen. The Dothan City School Board's vote hiring Dr. Charles Ledbetter was illegal, and a revote will have to be done. The board has called a special yeah, meeting for this board. Friday, May 22nd at 8 o'clock in the morning to vote again. WTVY first questioned the vote Monday night, but were assured by School Board Chairman Harry Wayne Parrish and Board Attorney Jerry Segrist it was legal. The board voted voted 5-2 to two to hire Dr. Ledbetter, but did not make how each member voted public. According to Alabama Secretary of State John Merrill, any governing body that takes a vote must be done in public, and the way the body votes individually must be revealed. Both Parrish and Segrest agreed they made a procedural mistake, and the vote did violate Alabama's open meeting laws. We now officially have a new Dothan School Board Superintendent. How the board voted, coming up. 
And in a formality move, the Dothan School Board today, for the second time this week, tapped a new school superintendent. Dr. Charles Ledbetter was picked on a 5-2 to two vote, the same as Monday's tally. Only Franklin Jones and Brenda Guilford voted for another candidate. The second ballot came due to Monday's vote being conducted in violation of Alabama's open meetings law. Board Attorney Jerry Segrest apologized to board members for allowing them to cast secret ballots, calling it an oversight. He also thanked WTVY for challenging the legality of the vote. Dr. Ledbetter told News 4 this morning he expects to be on the job July 1st, though he expects to spend a few days here before that date.